Okay, so the first thing I see here is, well, there's an awful lot of options. So I'm just here with this default brush that was loaded up. I've got a default color, I've got some orange here, so I'm gonna have a little scribble here. That this on the right here, this quad gradient. I'm just picking some colors. And this mixer I really like on the right hand side. That was one thing I really did like about Painter whenever I was uh, using it for a while, was having the little palette you could scribble on. So it's a bit sloppy in Manga Studio, the way I just sort of slop up the picture by sort of doing my own little mixer palette on it. So the mixer is really quite nice. Um, we've got a navigator here and um, brushes. Let me see, flat brush, brush textured, little put uh, or little put. I have no idea there. Ram texture. Mm, just having a complete scribble here. But um, obviously the um, area in which I can actually paint here, it's quite cluttered with all this stuff at the side. Look at that. It's like some kind of ridiculous, lovely cupcake icing there I'm just scribbling with. Just looking at these main brushes in the brushes section. I've got the majority of my screen being recorded here. But as I said, the actual um, canvas here is quite compressed because I've got so many menus all over the place. So, oh, okay, what is this? So, uh, oh yes, you can colour the uh, the little interface at the side there, the little windows. So I go around accidentally putting some pink in there. Oh, pink, no, that does not look good. So I just got it. Oh, the, the fun of learning a new software. But um, I'm going and trying the eraser now. So I like it in the fact that it feels like a sketchbook where I've literally got loads of tools to all sides here. Um, there's a magic wand tool. That seems to be pretty common sensey. I'm used to that in Photoshop and Manga Studio as well. It's got a tolerance you can set, and that's grand. Okay, let me see here. Brush, form, brush. So I'm trying here some things. Um, I'm just going to do a really rough, crappy sketch here of a of an eye, and let's make it a dragon. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm just doing the simplest little dragon here with just a very basic circle brush. That was one of the defaults I was given here. So there I am on layer zero. So um, that's the same brush again. That's a bit plain. Let me try something else here. It's, oh, good heavens, look at all these brushes. Um, after one and two. Ooh. Oh, it's funny actually put the strokes down and literally after you put it down it changes the effect. Okay, transiting grass, calligraphy, I do love this mixer on the side here, there's a calligraphy. See this is really lovely because the reason I went to to Manga Studio, particularly Manga Studio 5 from Photoshop was that I didn't like how the inking was and then whenever Manga Studio 5 brought in things like the watercolour and they increased the painting capabilities, then it just became, just, it almost replaced Photoshop for me, which is something I never thought I could say. And this, I, I'm just amazed at how authentic some of these paints actually look at this. Honestly, it's, it's like, it is like in Painter, whenever I did scribble with Painter for a while, I really liked the fact that I could be very sort of sloppy and actually sort of painterly with it. But I didn't um, create a, a lot of very um, sort of honed or crisp work with it the way people can. Um, I don't know if that's just something wrong with me or it's probably just me not having the patience. But um, so I'm laying down some very base colours here to have a look at the blending here. Um, so this is with um, Round Bristle Brushes Mixer Brush 1 I'm with at the moment. So I'm sure I shouldn't be just painting with this. I'm sure I should be uh, a bit more sensible with that. Random Dirty. Um, Sounds sassy. I've got tutorials on uh, on the website that show things like the dirty brushes individually. So that's something ideally I should have had a look at before I came in here, but I wanted to come on here like completely fresh. 
As I said, I only tested if the software loaded up once to make sure it ran, and it did, and then somehow I clicked something, and that's why that thing with the uh, the little undo options is there floating in the middle of the screen. I literally didn't want to click on anything else because I don't know the software. I'm just going in. Again, this is all with the mixer brush. I'm sure this is really not what you're meant to be doing. I'm just going in. I'm using this quad gradient to pick at little colours and blending in colours here like I would normally. But oh, this mixer, I really love it. I'm sure I can make it bigger, but um, there's so much guff on the screen right now. Um, that is the one thing that um, that I remember was pointed out in the Imagine FX uh, review of the software that I skimmed past. And I thought, oh, I'll go and try this software. It did say that it was a very cluttered interface, but that it's very customizable. So um, this is me just going in literally as a person off the street. I've got no idea what I'm doing. It's just uh, someone having a little a little play around here as someone who's normally used to particularly Manga Studio. So I've just got a couple of sort of basic layers here. I don't know how close or how far it imitates the uh, the interface that I would have in Photoshop or Manga Studio. So. Put some, ugh, look at the shape of that brush there. I'm just, no, I'll, oh, I'm making a mess here. You can do an awful lot with the shapes of the brushes here. Just look, I've got this dragon here in the middle. And you just look at all the different, different tools I've used on the sides here. And I've only used maybe about five of the different tools just because I'm having a look at what they look like. Um, I really like the painterly effect that I achieved just with the mixer brush. As I said, I'm sure that's not what I'm meant to be doing. I'm sure if I sat down and actually read some tutorials, some guides, I'd know what I was doing, but it's hopefully someone who would just blunder into some new software like I would and just maybe have a look and decide to give it a download. I mean, I'll pop uh, the link to the free trial underneath there. Um, the software is very, very affordable at the moment. It was only $19, I believe it was. So it's when you consider the cost of Photoshop, my copy of Photoshop CS4 that I have from many years ago cost me about £400, something, I think it was actually more like 600 actually. I saved up for my job for it. So, you know, and that's well out of date now. So you have a look at this. I just, I do a very basic set of scales there. That's no artist in their right mind would do that. But I just, um, I'm just fiddling with the blending things here. So we've got soft light, we've got multiply, we've got darken. We've got an awful lot of the ones that would be familiar to Photoshop and Manga Studio users. So I'm sure I should have a, a proper look at this. Now, one thing that bothers me a little bit, I don't know whether it's just me or whether my tablet I'm using, but, um, I find if I hover over options, um, it doesn't give me like a little pop-up bubble to say what the thing is. So like the the icons on these various windows, if they're not marked clearly, like say with the little uh, the little padlock there, I would know that that was to lock the layer. But some of those other little icons on the layers palette, I'm not quite sure what they do. And if I can't hover over them and it tell me what it does, then, you know, I'm a bit wary to, to fiddle with it. But again, I'm sure this is stuff that can all be rectified with uh, with tutorials and the little how-to user guides. So they do have a couple of user guides on there, which I will check out myself, I promise. But so I'm just going around doing some little highlights on my dragon here. Bless him, he's actually not looking too bad for the world's crummiest little sketch. That was just using one or two of the little tools here. Um, I think he looks really quite nice. I mean, he's not a piece of artwork to rave about, but in terms of like, say, maybe like a, a little illustrative style, like a little, I don't know, children's storybook style even, I think that's quite nice. I really do like it whenever materials look realistic. So I'm dragging some of these things around a bit. So I've brought the mixer out because it is tiny and wee, and I like to make a great big mess whenever I can. Um, so I'm having a look at some of these other hairy gradient. <laughs> that sounds like a person. Because I'm just here, so I'm trying a couple of these little brushes. Now all of these, uh, these sort of these general properties for the brushes here, I'm sure I could use this to 
do things like extend the, the drag of the paint and make things a bit easier to blend. I'm literally just fiddling around here. So again, I'm changing the scale. I can change the scale of this of this tab. Ah, I've got a bit more room here. Um, I'm sure with customizing it, I can probably, well, hopefully make it bigger, more square. Um, so I'm just blending here um, some sort of candy-ish colors here. Uh, it is so nice to have a little a little scribbly thing here of course the handy thing with digital art as opposed to uh, traditional art when you've got things like a palette or a swatch is that you can literally put things on their own layer and just delete them anyway when you're done so you know in a way you could say that having the little mixer you don't really need one but I think it's quite nice to have so I'm going all over the place with this brush hairy too. I like the fact that it's hairy. Look at that. I mean, honestly, the, the that just looks like actual paint that I've slopped down on a piece of pressed sort of board. That is brilliant. I, I'm literally just testing how far I can spread this paint around now. It looks fantastic. It's, well, it's like a big worm. It makes me feel the way I did whenever I first tried Painter and was amazed at how much better it was than Photoshop in terms of the uh, in terms of the painting. I mean with with the improvements in Photoshop and all the custom brushes and everything you can get now it's uh, you know you could say that it's probably well I don't know it's been a long time since I've used Painter but I mean things that actually imitate the traditional media there's something really charming about them. That's lovely. I'm I'm enjoying that drawing there. So I've got simple ink there. Um. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna save this because it supports PSD as you can see here. So um, let's save it as test there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my uh Photoshop CS4, and I'm going to try and open up the file I just created. Um, just to have a look how that translates. Um, there are all my grabs of my different artwork. Okay, so ah, so this if you use Photoshop, this should be more familiar to you. See, so I've got my layers here, and that's good. You can sort of see this. Yeah, it looks great. It, you can see the central section there of the canvas that was all obscured by all the palettes. Look at all that. But again, it is completely customizable, so I should be able to rectify that. And it does seem as though the. Uh, it translates really well into Photoshop, which is a lovely surprise. So presumably I should be able to open up that PSD in Manga Studio as well um, to be able to further fiddle with it. And I would say for, for the low price that it's currently at, that is, you know, worth the price of, say, you know, a couple of premium brushes or something that you could buy for another program. So... I mean, if you feel like having a bit of a free form piece of software that you can fully customize, I think this is probably, I, I really like it. I really do. If I had more time, I'm sure if I do find time, I'll sit down and have a look at some proper guides for it or something so that I know what I'm doing. But I I really think that is a, a good investment. I really do like it. So I definitely recommend, I would think. So as I said, the uh, download link for the trial should be underneath there. So um, show some support. If you like it, then um, buy it. And I'm sure, you know, as time comes on, we'll be releasing more and more sort of quick start user guides for this program just to get it the way you want. So I'm hoping that if I get the, the, uh, the time and the inclination, then I should be able to set up a pretty decent interface with it. And as I said, for similarities to something like Painter, but with such a low price I would say especially you know for people who are beginning out wanting to maybe get into painter at a later date or wanting to complement their other art software whether photoshop like I have there or say manga studio which I use much more often I would say it can you know with the PSD compatibility that should be able to go pretty well hand in hand so I definitely give this one a big thumbs up so I recommend that to anyone wanting to have a little go even with a more basic tablet as long as you've got the the basic parameters there for the software I'd say have a good wee go and you know you'll be as 
as much of an expert as I was just there as soon as you turn it on. So, you know, I really do recommend it. So in the short run, very fun, creative, again, cluttered, as they did say in Imagine FX. But I think for the fact that you can strip it down to whatever you want, you can change the opacity of the uh, of the individual windows and everything. So, you know, for the versatility, I'd say it is daunting. But if you start minimal and maybe build your way up if you know what i mean then that might be a that might be a, a good thing to do with it so yeah definitely recommend hopefully we'll fiddle around with that a bit more in future maybe compliment something else i'm painting so thank you for watching there today so i'm very thrilled by this program and i hope a couple more people out there will be too all the best now take care bye